little fox. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, Chapter One: Down the Rabbit Hole. On a golden summer afternoon, Alice sat by the river. Her older sister Charlotte sat beside her, happily reading a book. Feeling bored, Alice glanced at her sister's book. What's the point of a book without pictures? Alice asked. Charlotte was too busy reading to reply. <sighs> Alice gave a tired sigh and thought about making a daisy chain. However, that would require getting up to pick the daisies. And the hot day was making Alice feel very tired and lazy. Suddenly, a rabbit ran past the two girls. He was white and wore a colorful vest. Oh dear! Oh dear! He cried. I'm going to be late. Alice was so sleepy that she didn't think a talking animal was strange. But then the white rabbit pulled a watch from his vest pocket. Rabbits don't wear vests, Alice said to herself, and they certainly don't carry watches. Alice jumped up and ran after the white rabbit. Near a hedge, he popped down a large rabbit hole. Alice followed right after him, not thinking about how she'd get out. Suddenly, she was falling. Help! Alice cried. She felt as if she were falling down a deep well. It was too dark to see anything below, so Alice looked around as she fell. The rabbit hole was lined with cupboards and shelves. Maps and pictures decorated the walls. Alice grabbed a jar labeled orange jam from one shelf. She was disappointed to discover it was empty. Oh. Huh. If I drop this jar, it might kill somebody below, Alice said. She slipped it onto the next shelf she passed. Alice continued to fall. After this, I'll never get upset about just falling down some stairs. Why, I won't even complain if I fall off the roof. Down, down, down. Would this fall ever end? How many miles have I fallen by now? Alice said. I must be getting near the center of the Earth. What if I fall right through the Earth? Where would she end up? Alice tried to remember her geography lessons. I'll just have to ask the first person I meet. I'll say, "Please, ma'am, is this New Zealand or Australia?" Alice was silent for a while, but then she started thinking about Dinah, her cat. I hope someone remembers to feed Dinah tonight. Alice said aloud. Oh, Dinah, I wish you were here. There aren't any mice in the air, but you might catch a bat. Do cats eat bats? Do bats eat cats? Alice didn't know the answer to either question, and she was feeling so so tired. She was beginning to dream that she was walking hand in hand with Dinah. Thump! Suddenly, Alice landed on a pile of sticks and dry leaves. Oh! She wasn't hurt, so she jumped right up. Ahead, the white rabbit was hurrying down a long passage. I'd better catch up with that rabbit. Alice ran as fast as she could. Oh, my ears and whiskers! It's getting very late," the white rabbit said as he turned a corner. Alice turned the corner too, but the white rabbit had disappeared. She was now in a long, low hall with doors lining both walls. Lamps hanging from the ceiling dimly illuminated the hall. The white rabbit must have gone through one of these doors," Alice said. She walked down one side of the hall, trying every door. They were all locked. She walked up the other side of the hall. Those doors were locked too. Alice stood sadly in the middle of the hall. How will I ever get out of here? She cried.
Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, Chapter 2, A Strange Drink. Looking around the dimly lit hall, Alice spotted a glass table. On top of it lay a tiny gold key. I wonder if this will unlock a door, Alice said as she picked up the key. She tried the key in every door on both sides of the hall. It was too small, but Alice didn't give up. She tried again, and this time she discovered a small curtain. Hmm. This wasn't here before, Alice said, pulling aside the curtain. Behind it was a door about 15 inches high, and the tiny gold key fit perfectly. Alice opened the door and knelt down. She peered through a small passage to a beautiful garden. Wow! That's the loveliest garden I've ever seen, she said. Look at those flowers and that fountain! Alice wanted to wander through the garden, but she was too big. She wished she could make herself small enough to fit through the door. I'm sure I could. If only I knew how to begin, she said. So many strange things had already happened that nothing seemed impossible anymore. There is no point in waiting by the little door, Alice thought. She headed back to the table. Maybe there will be another key, or instructions for shrinking myself, Alice said. Instead, she found a bottle which had definitely not been there before. Tied around its neck was a paper label. Drink me, it said in large, beautiful letters. I'm not going to drink some strange liquid, Alice said. That could be poison! Alice examined the label carefully, but there was no mention of poison. So she decided to take a sip. Mmm, that's delicious! Alice licked her lips. It's like a mixture of cherry tart, pineapple, roast turkey, and buttered toast. Alice liked the liquid so much that she soon finished the whole bottle. And then something strange began to happen. What an odd feeling. Alice looked around her. I seem to be shrinking. And indeed, Alice was only 10 inches high, but she was not upset. She was now the perfect size to fit through the little door. Alice was eager to enter the garden, but she waited a few minutes. I want to be sure I've finished shrinking, she said. What if I keep shrinking until there's nothing left of me? Fortunately for Alice, that didn't happen. So she walked over to the little door, which had mysteriously closed again. Alice reached in her pocket for the key. Oh no! I left the key on the table! Alice raced back to the table. She could see the key quite clearly through the glass but there was no way she could reach it. Trying to climb one of the glass legs, Alice slid back to the floor. The leg was so slippery. Still, she kept trying until she was exhausted. Alice sat down and cried, but that only lasted for a minute. Crying won't help you, Alice said to herself. She wiped her eyes. Now there was a glass box under the table. Inside was a cake with the words, Eat Me, spelled out in raisins. If this cake makes me grow larger, I can reach the key, Alice said. If I grow smaller, I can creep under the door. Either way, I'll get into that garden. Alice took a bite and nothing happened. She was very disappointed because she now expected strange things to occur. This is a useless cake, Alice said. 
But she ate it all anyway. And then she began to grow. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland Chapter 3 The Pool of Tears Things are getting stranger by the minute, Alice said as she kept growing. When she looked down, her feet were almost out of sight. Goodbye, feet, Alice said. I wonder who will put on your shoes and socks. I will be much too far away to help you. Then she began to worry. What if her feet wouldn't walk where she wanted to go? It must be nice to them. I'll give them a new pair of boots every Christmas. But it will seem strange to send presents to my own feet. Oh dear, I am talking nonsense. Just then, her head hit the whole ceiling. Alice kept growing. She was more than nine feet tall, but she wasn't upset. Now she was big enough to reach the gold key on the glass table. Alice picked up the key and hurried to the garden door. Poor Alice. She was so big. If she lay on her side, she could look into the garden with one eye. As for getting into the garden, that was harder than ever. Alice started to cry again. <laughs> <laughs> she tried scolding herself, but that only made her cry harder. Alice cried buckets of tears. A large pool formed around her, four inches deep and spreading halfway down the hall. After a while, Alice heard footsteps in the distance. She quickly wiped her eyes so she could see who was coming. It was the White Rabbit wearing a jacket and carrying white gloves and a fan. He trotted through the dark hall, muttering to himself. The Duchess, the Duchess, she'll be very angry if I've kept her waiting. Alice was feeling very desperate by now. She was willing to ask for help from anyone, even a talking rabbit. She waited until the white rabbit was nearby before speaking in a quiet, timid voice. Please, sir! Startled, the white rabbit dropped his gloves and fan. He ran as fast as he could into the darkness. Alice picked up the rabbit's things. She began to fan herself because the hall was very hot. How strange everything is today, Alice said. Yesterday, everything was normal. I wonder if I somehow changed overnight. I almost think I did feel a little different this morning. Alice continued to fan herself. Maybe I haven't changed into another person. She thought about all her friends. She hadn't been changed into any of them. Alice burst into tears again. <laughs> I wish Charlotte would look down this rabbit hole and call my name. I'm so tired of being here all alone. As she said this, she looked down. She saw that she'd put on one of the white rabbit's gloves. How can his glove fit me? I must be shrinking again. Alice ran back to the table and stood next to it for comparison. She decided that she was about two feet high. And she was continuing to shrink. It must be the fan, Alice said. She dropped it to save herself from completely disappearing. That was a narrow escape. And now for the garden. Alice ran back to the garden door. But it was locked again, and she didn't have the key. She searched the hall and found the key on the glass table. How did the key get here? Alice looked up at it in despair. Things are worse than ever because I've never been this small before. Just as she said this, her foot slipped. Whoa! Alice fell up to her chin in salt water. Alice 
Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, Chapter 4, Another Swimmer. When she fell into the salt water, Alice thought she had fallen into the sea. But she soon realized she was in a pool of her own tears. I cried all these tears when I was nine feet high, Alice said. She swam about, trying to find her way to dry land. I wish I hadn't cried so much. I'll be punished for that by drowning in my own tears. That will be strange indeed. But everything is strange today. Just then, Alice heard something splashing. At first she thought it must be a walrus or a hippo. But then she remembered how small she was. The creature must be small, too. Alice swam toward the sound and soon spotted a mouse, which had also fallen into the pool. Is there any point in speaking to this creature? Alice thought. Can he even understand me? Everything is so strange down here that he probably can talk. She decided to take a chance and speak to him. Oh, mouse! Alice called. Do you know the way out of this pool? I'm very tired of swimming. Oh, Mouse! The mouse looked at Alice with some interest. He also seemed to wink at her, but said nothing. Hmm, perhaps he doesn't understand English, Alice said to herself. Maybe he's from France. Alice decided to try speaking some French. All she could think of was the first sentence in her French grammar book. Unfortunately, that sentence was, Where is my cat? The mouse gave a sudden leap out of the water and quivered with fright. <sighs> oh, I'm so sorry, Alice said quickly. I forgot that mice dislike cats. Dislike cats? The mouse cried. Would you like cats if you were me? Well, perhaps not, but don't be angry with me, Alice said calmly. She was glad that the mouse spoke English. I wish that I could show you my cat, Dinah. I think you'd learn to like cats if you met her. Dinah is such a dear, quiet thing. The mouse said nothing. Alice swam lazily around the pool as she described Dinah for the mouse. Dinah lies by the fire, purring so nicely. She licks her paws and washes her face. She's such a nice, soft thing to pet. And she's the best at catching mice. The mouse was shaking with anger, and Alice was sure she had offended him. Oh, I beg your pardon, Alice said. We won't talk about Dinah anymore. We? The mouse squeaked. As if I would talk about such a thing. Our family has always hated cats. Don't let me hear that word again. All right, Alice said as she desperately tried to think of another topic of conversation. How about dogs? Are you fond of dogs? The mouse did not reply. So Alice went on eagerly. There's such a nice dog on the farm near our house. It fetches things when you throw them. And it sits up and begs for its dinner. The farmer says it's worth a lot of money. That's because it's so good at catching rats and... The mouse started swimming away from Alice as fast as he could. Oh no, I'm afraid I've hurt his feelings again, Alice said in a sad voice. She decided to try one more time to make friends with the frightened animal. Mouse, dear, Alice called softly. If you come back, I promise we won't talk about dogs or cats anymore. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland Chapter 5 A Race to Get Dry
When the mouse heard Alice calling, he turned around and swam slowly toward her. With a trembling voice, he said, Let's swim to shore. After I tell you my story, you'll understand why I hate cats and dogs. Alice was happy to get out of the salt water. The pool was getting crowded with birds. Alice led the way, and everyone swam to shore. It was an odd-looking group that gathered at the edge of the pool. Everyone, including Alice, was dripping wet, grumpy, and uncomfortable. The main question was how to get dry again. The creatures discussed this among themselves, and Alice soon joined in. She wasn't surprised anymore that she could talk to birds and animals, or that they could talk to her. In fact, she had a long argument with the parrot. We need towels, Alice finally said. Lots and lots of towels. That's the fastest way to dry off. You're completely wrong, the parrot said. Birds never use towels. Do you have a better idea? Alice was getting tired of arguing about towels. I'm older than you are, so I know more than you do, the parrot replied. Really, parrot? How old are you anyway? <gasps> but the parrot refused to reveal her age, so that was the end of the argument. Fortunately, the mouse took charge of the group. Sit down, everyone. And I'll tell you my story while you dry. My family has a long, sad history with cats and... <sighs> the duck said with a shiver. I beg your pardon? The mouse said. Did you say something? But before the duck could reply, the dodo spoke up. I know how to get dry. We'll have a race. Alice looked around the hall. Where will we race? The dodo was already marking off a rough circle. The exact shape of the course doesn't matter, he said when he finished. <laughs> it was the strangest race that Alice had ever seen. There was no starting line because the dodo let everyone start in different spots. And he didn't say, On your mark? Get set, go! Instead, the creatures started whenever they liked. When they'd been running for 30 minutes, the dodo called out, The race is over! <laughs> Everyone was now dry and happy. The birds gathered around the dodo. But who is the winner? One asked. This was a puzzling question, which the dodo thought about for a long time. At last, he said, Everybody has won, and all must have prizes. But who will give out the prizes? A bird asked. She will, of course. The dodo pointed to Alice. Everyone crowded around her, shouting, Prizes! Prizes! Alice had no idea what to do. But reaching into her pocket, she found a box of candies. Luckily, they'd stayed dry, and she had enough to give everyone one piece. However, there wasn't one left for herself. But you must have a prize! The mouse insisted. Of course, the dodo replied. He turned to Alice. What else do you have in your pocket? Only a thimble, Alice said. Hand it over, the dodo commanded her. They all crowded around Alice once again as the dodo solemnly awarded her the thimble. After he had finished a short speech, everyone cheered. 
Alice thought the whole thing was silly. But the birds looked so serious that she didn't dare laugh. So she simply bowed, thinking about what strange creatures she'd met in the rabbit hole. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland Chapter 6 A Long Tail After the prizes were given out, it was time to eat them. Alice did not eat her thimble, of course, but the other creatures ate their candy. The large birds complained that the candy was so small they couldn't taste it. The small birds coughed and choked on their candy because it was so large. But after a while, everyone settled down. The creature sat in a circle and begged the mouse to tell them his story. You promised to tell me about your family, Alice said, and why you hate C and D. She didn't say cats and dogs. She didn't want to upset the mouse again. Mine is a long and sad tale, the mouse began. Alice studied the mouse's body. You definitely have a long tail, but I don't understand why it's sad. No, not my tail, the mouse said impatiently. My tail, as in story? He went on talking. Meanwhile, Alice kept thinking about words that sound alike but have different meanings. Now, do you understand why I don't like cats? The mouse said to Alice. What? Alice looked at him and blinked. You weren't paying attention, the mouse said angrily. I don't know why I bothered telling you this story. He started to walk away. Alice felt bad that she had upset him again. Please! And repeat your story, she called after him. I promise to listen to every word this time. Yes, please do come back, all the others said together. But the mouse only shook his head impatiently and walked faster. What a pity he wouldn't stay, the parrot sighed. I wish Dinah was here, Alice said. She would fetch him for us. And who is Dinah, if I may ask? The parrot said. Dinah's my cat. She's so good at catching mice. Alice replied eagerly, for she was always happy to talk about her pet. And you should see her chasing birds. <gasps> All the birds started talking at once, and some hurried away as fast as they could. One old magpie began wrapping himself in a scarf. I really must be going. This air is bad for my throat. A canary called out in a trembling voice to her children. Come away, my dears. It's time for us to go home. Alice was soon left all alone. I wish I'd never mentioned Dinah, she said sadly. Nobody seems to like her down here, but I think she's the best cat in the world. Oh, Dinah. I wonder if I'll ever see you again. Poor Alice began to cry because she felt so lonely and sad. In a little while, however, she heard footsteps. She looked up eagerly, hoping that the mouse had changed his mind and was coming back. But once again, it was the white rabbit. This time he was walking slowly and looking anxiously about, as if he'd lost something. Alice heard him muttering to himself. The Duchess! The Duchess! The white rabbit said as he looked high and low. Oh, my paws! Oh, my fur and whiskers! The Duchess is going to be so angry if I'm late. 
I wonder where I could have dropped them. I don't see them anywhere. Alice guessed right away that he was looking for his gloves and fan. She happily began hunting for them, but they were nowhere to be seen. In fact, everything had changed. She seemed to be outdoors now. The great hall with the glass table and little door had disappeared. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland Chapter 7 At the White Rabbit's House The White Rabbit soon noticed Alice hunting for his gloves and fan. He called out to her in an angry voice. Mary Ann, what are you doing here? Run home right now and fetch me a pair of gloves and a fan. Hurry! Alice knew that the rabbit had mistaken her for someone else. But he sounded so angry that she ran where he was pointing. She didn't try to explain his mistake to him. He probably thinks I'm his servant, she thought. He'll be surprised when he finds out who I am. But he's so angry right now that I'd better find his gloves and fan. Alice soon came upon a neat little house. On the door was a brass sign that said, W. Rabbit. She hurried inside and closed the front door. How strange to be sent on an errand by a rabbit. Alice laughed. <laughs> Soon Dinah will be sending me on errands too. Alice entered a room with a table near the window. On the table lay a fan and a pair of white gloves. Alice picked them up. She was about to leave when she spotted a bottle on the floor. This time there was no label saying drink me, but Alice uncorked the bottle anyway. Whenever I eat or drink anything today, something interesting happens, she thought. She took a sip. I hope this will make me grow again because I'm tired of being so small. That is exactly what happened, and much faster than Alice expected. Before she had drunk half the bottle, her head was pressing against the ceiling. She quickly put down the bottle. That's enough. I hope I won't grow anymore because I can't get out the door. I wish I hadn't drunk so much. But it was too late for that. Alice went on growing and soon had to kneel on the floor. In another minute, she had to lie with one foot up the chimney. She stuck one arm out the window. There's no more room for me, Alice wailed. Luckily, she stopped growing. But she was very uncomfortable being squashed inside the white rabbit's house. <sighs> it was much nicer at home, Alice said. I wasn't always changing size, and mice and rabbits weren't ordering me around. I wish I hadn't gone down that rabbit hole. And yet, and yet, this is quite an adventure. I used to think fairy tales weren't real. And now I seem to be in the middle of one. Maybe someone will write a book about me. <laughs> Suddenly, Alice heard an angry voice outside. Mary Ann, where are you? The white rabbit called. He tried to open his front door, but Alice's elbow was pressing hard against it. Then I'll go through a window, the white rabbit said. No, you won't, Alice said. She waited until she heard the white rabbit under the window. Then she tried to grab him. <coughs> the white rabbit shrieked and ran away. Pat! Pat! Where are you? Right here! Digging potatoes in the garden! A man replied. 
cat. What's that in the window? There was a pause while the gardener looked at the house. Mm, looks like an arm to me. An arm? Who's ever seen an arm that big? Take it away! Alice waved her arm around and heard some whispering. Then all was silent for a while, until a crowd began gathering under the window. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland Chapter 8 On the Run Friends of the White Rabbit had come to help him get rid of Alice. Alice couldn't see how many creatures had gathered under the window, but she could hear them. Send someone down the chimney! One voice cried. Pull the arm out the window! Another voice cried. I wish they could pull me out the window, Alice said to herself. I don't want to stay here any longer. She heard more mumbling, and finally the white rabbit spoke. Good, he said. A wheelbarrow full should be enough. A wheelbarrow full of what? Alice asked quietly. She didn't have long to wonder. The next moment, a shower of pebbles came through the window. Some of them hit Alice in the face. Ow! I'll put a stop to this, she said to herself. Then, in a louder voice, she called, You'd better not do that again! If you do, I'll tell my cat Dinah about this! No one outside said anything. Meanwhile, Alice was surprised to see the pebbles turning into little cakes. If I eat one, it's sure to change my size. I can't grow any larger, so... I bet it'll make me smaller. Alice swallowed a cake and was delighted to feel herself shrinking. As soon as she was small enough to fit through the door, she ran outside. A crowd of birds and animals immediately rushed at her. But Alice ran off as fast as she could. She was soon deep in the woods. However, Alice did not feel safe yet. As she was searching anxiously among the trees, she heard something bark. Alice looked up and saw an enormous puppy staring back at her. It stretched out a paw, trying to touch her. Oh, you poor thing, Alice said in a kind voice. Maybe if she gave it a pat, it wouldn't eat her. But the puppy wouldn't approach her, even though she was only three inches tall. Perhaps it would play fetch. Alice picked up a stick, and the puppy yelped with delight. It charged at Alice, who ran behind a bush. When Alice appeared again, the puppy rushed at the stick and tumbled head over heels. Oh my! Alice said. I'm so small now. This is like playing games with a horse. At any moment, she expected the puppy to crush her. But now it was running back and forth, barking wildly. Finally, it got tired and lay down panting. The puppy's tongue was hanging out and its eyes were closing. This is probably a good time to escape, Alice said. While the puppy rested, she quietly slipped away. Then she ran and ran until she could barely hear the puppy barking. That was a nice puppy, Alice said breathlessly. She rested against a tiny flower, fanning herself with one of its leaves. If I were bigger, I could teach it some tricks. <laughs> I really do need to grow bigger again. 
But how will I do that? I suppose I should eat or drink something. But what? That was certainly a good question. Alice looked around at the flowers and grass. But she couldn't see anything that might help her. There was a mushroom growing near her that was as big as she was. Alice looked under it for anything to eat or drink. Then she stood on tiptoe and peeped over the edge of the mushroom. Her eyes met those of a blue caterpillar. He was sitting quietly on top of the mushroom with his arms folded. They stared at each other in silence for quite some time. Little 